Hello, this is Zachary from Zachary 3D Prints. In the intro, I was printing three cubes and they are different than the other. The thing is, if you are using a slicer software, it might be Cura, but it also can be Slicer Prusa Edition 2.0 software. I'm using this kind of software to test and look if it is easier to use than Cura. Why? Because if you are using Cura 3. Point whatever, and you switch over to Cura 4.0, you have noticed that there is a huge gap between the two versions. It looks easier to use and maybe better to use, but there are also some difficulties. If you have grown into the uh, one and the other, it not, it's not so difficult. But then, if you are brand new to 3D printing, you are mostly using the recommended settings in the Cura Slicer software. However, you can also try to use Pulsar Slicer uh, software. Why? Firstly, it's easy to use. Secondly, it's free. You can just download it. You go to the website of uh, Prusa research I believe and then you are able to download this amazing piece of software it's not only for your for Prusa printers it's easy if you have one then it's ready to install and hey whoop, you can just use it but in my case I'm having a Creality printer the Ender 3 Pro and you can use also this software on it because if you use thingy first or my mini factory or some other uh, uh, stl downloads for 3d models to be printed sometimes you have already pre-sliced uh, models in there but then not every printer is talking the same language so you need to adjust some settings and there you use this slicer software for so when you are using slicer Prusa edition 2.0 software you can use the easy on the go method because i didn't read any tutorial about using this slicer software but i do want to show you how you can use the this amazing prusa slicer the easy way because well i'm not a 20 year old guy that is doing this now i'm a 40 year old guy nearly 41 but hey uh, maybe i will cut this out this piece of 1.41 uh, years old uh, <clears throat> but we were talking about 3d printing so when you are using the software like the Prusa slicer tada, here it is it's easy to use as I said because when you are starting with 3d printing uh, 9 out of 10 people are coming to Cura. Maybe, okay? But if you buy a Prusa printer, then you will use this slicer software because, hey, it's in the software that is shipped with the 3D printer. And, hey, it's a better printer. The first cube that I'm going to show you, I have to watch at the bottom because, number one, this cube. Because the light is very bright bright light hmm, you get it so this cube was printed the first time that i used the prusa slicer 2.0 software and it's quite good there are some little yeah well little arrows on it errors on it errors and it's it's 
well maybe on camera it looks okay but in real life this this looks normal okay because I got some prints up there from hey no, this, 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 I have to confess, this was also printed in Process License 2.0, so, hmm. Do you have anything else here laying around? No. No. Okay, well, doesn't matter. Then you have this, this cube. This cube is printed at 0 0.1 millimeters. In Cura, the model terminology, words, the setting on Cura it's called super that is 0 0.12 millimeters this is even tinier but look at the quality it, it, I did for Instagram I made a picture so I'm going to add this picture in the b-roll you will see the difference between the cube 1 and the cube 2 but then you want to just go very very fast 3D printing. In Cura settings, you will use the low profile. The low profile is 0 0.28, maybe 0 0.3. In Prusa Slicer, 0 0.2. This is an amazing result. In real life, this looks quite good it's flat it's shiny and the lines are nearly visible if you watch it in real life you see the you see the lines which is no problem but it's flat it's it's shiny it's looking awesome because for example uh, this little model this is a side of a watcher from rise to zero dawn this is I made this video for the time that I made it on uh, Zachary High Tech YouTube channel how to print multiple parts in Cura from Thingiverse I will put the link in the description and then you can see how I did this because the software from Cura didn't slice it pretty good all prints messed up because this was one of the best ones and this one also looks okay or maybe you cannot see it this looks okay but then the back side it's <laughs> really worse this this is yeah now this is this is bad this is just i don't want to show you i did i know but you you don't want to see it um yeah and some other parts that were a little bit messed up but the best is yet to come so well i'm going to switch screens then you will see what i mean for example the cube i do want to give you an introduction how to add a printer to your prusa 0.2 slicer software which i am not going to do now because i want to keep the video short I'm going to add a model. Well, I already have one. Ta -da. I double click on it and there, boom, there you have it. Easy as that. Well, I'm going to show you some basic things in Prusa Slicer 0.2. Well, as you can see, this is the add button. When you're pushing on it, then you will get a little dialogue. There you select the model that you are that you want to 3d print and then whoop, it comes there of course well i don't have to tell what this is this is the delete next to it you have the delete so if you are printing multiple parts uh, you just add one that you don't want to have you can just use this don't use the trash bin because it is going to delete everything on your building plate then when you are printing multiple parts i will i am able to show you that of course but i'm going to use i'm going to do that in a different video then you have the arrange button 
it's very easy to use man you don't want to know how easy it is going to be then also the copy uh, copy uh, feature and also the paste feature huh where you copy it you have to paste it somewhere and then you have some also other things layer editing so okay now then on your left you have also some cool features for example if you select the model it's already selected so hey it's not so difficult you have one that called move if you press the m button on the keyboard it's always good to use short keys it's increasing your um, working flow and also you are using both hands to work then you can yeah select it and then you get those three uh, arrows and this will tell you where your model is going to go you also have this little try arrow pointy thing one is going to the left one is going to the right and the other one is going up and here you have exactly the same here if i'm going to stand on the blue one for example you will see that all the other arrows are going away so here also for the red and also for the green you can also take the cube and just move it around the building plate okay so then you can say well i'm going to 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 resize it here you can resize it like this and you can also resize it in height you can also do this you can do this this is amazing big cube okay so you can different do different kind of things well so let's say hey i'm going to to want to move it you you have something like a clock if you know how to watch clock this is also a nice feature to use say just exactly like this or just this one it's way 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 easy then also you can use this one if you say like well this is impossible to print and it's uh, not so very big surface to print on you just use the place on face place on face okay you click on it and then pop just that just like that it's so easy and also the cut version well if you want to as you can see you can uh, keep upper part you can keep lower part rotate you can do whatever you like so well i'm going to delete object i'm just going to put it once more again in it and there bam you have it everything is as it was for example if you want to start with a 3d model and you are starting to use a different kind of filament i think and i believe it's very good to start first with a 3d printed it's always good to start with a calibration cube and i numbered mine with for example three and this is 0 0.228 millimeters this is uh, a 0 0.1 from there out i can tell what i can expect if i use this layer height so in this case um just because of this is the only one i do a uh, right mouse click on the model and i do for example infill because infill is the thing that you don't see but it's there the infill for this cube it's now on 20 percent when you are using thingiverse or my mini factory you got this readme file which tells you in which kind of settings it's most ideal to 3d print this model for example support yes or no if support is used a uh, raft skirt or brim layer height layer height is some some favor if you favor it if you you want to just do a fast print then it's it's going to be a, a, a 0.3 millimeters if you want to have a very nice statue nice very nice model to dream print that you want to put 
Next to it, elevation, then it's 0 0.1, 0 0.0 not. You, you get the idea. But the infill is the thing that are that is inside of the model what you're not going to see. So if you are putting a hammer on your uh, wall, then you use a as much as possible infill. But for models like this cube, the inside is used an infill of 20%. But you can also set it on 10% or 30%, whatever that's the cost. If you have this, this holder for your hammer, then you take an infill of 90 or 100%. Makes sense. So in this kind of case, I, I used 20% and the stars fill pattern. If you start 3D printing and you see what happens, uh, that are the little squares inside. Well, if I look into the light with this cube between it, then I will see some squares in it. So if it is done, then you can also, yeah, then, then you're done. You click on slice now and I've got my 3D printer, my uh, Creality Ender 3 Pro. I've got connected with my OctoPrint print server. So this API key I linked together with my Prusa Slicer 2.0 software. So I can say, well, send the G code. But you can also say, well, hey, I am going to export it to my uh, micro sd card that's perfectly fine you you save it on there and then you put it in your 3d printer and then the fun starts that being said i'm going to show you the time lapse of the cube right now So, and there you have it, you got, as you can see, can see in the very short timeless videos, you can see that it's quite easy to 3D print this. These 3D prints are usually, because two centimeters high uh, in every direction, it's, it's very easy to print, very fast as well. This one took over 20 minutes something like this so if you have if you want to take some time to get your printer as perfect as it can be for something like a very big model and you want to know your exact thing that your 3d printer can do with the new filament that you maybe just changed then it's easy to use this one you can use the settings you can adjust it to make it as perfect as possible but I do recommend when you using every time the same kind of filament write down on one of the sides which kind of uh, layer height you have it so that you always have a reference point to use it it's not so crazy to do this because if you want to see how smooth a surface is you can feel it, you can see it. Is it going to shine or not? Not every filament of the same brand, especially in the color, you you have this this special things on it. This this one is quite shiny, but you also have filaments that are in different kind of color. But because of the different kind of color, you always you can also see that there are some different print qualities so that being said thanks for watching this video of sakuri 3d prints i hope you enjoyed this video if not please add some comments what i can change about this kind of videos and if you did like it please do a thumbs up like and subscribe to my channel and i will i hope you to see you some other time See you next time and happy 3D printing. Bye-bye.